do you sometimes feel that time moves fast? Like 2014 just started and now it's almost gone. And now it's going to be 2015 very soon. And um, the older you get, the faster, the faster time uh, speeds up. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I noticed. Uh, so anyway, today, I'd like to declare to you a personal spiritual conviction. And I'd like to lay it as soon as I can in this message. And that is, you, whoever you are in this room, you and I are beloved children of God. You and I are beloved sons and daughters of God. Now it's so easy to say that. And it's more difficult as we move on to live it. Our enormous spiritual task is to claim that message, to claim that message and to live it. And it's not as easy as it is said, because when we look at humanity from history, that's what humanity have always tried. The main question that mankind has been asking himself is, who am I? What is my identity? And humans have tried to find out who they are because knowing who we are really determines how we live our lives. Now, if I may draw my chronology, I was born in November 19. 57. <laughs> so as you can see, that's my time clock. And it's not very long. In fact, when you go to a cemetery, I've seen a lot of tombs, you will see the birth year, 1930. And then there's Dash, 1980. Somehow life has been so shrunk into this Dash. That's the whole life that we have. So that's me, my time clock. And uh, the, I know that there will be an end point, right? Somewhere here. What do you think is the year? <laughs> Nobody knows, right? So uh, uh, probably let me say, uh, I don't want to guess. Let's <laughs> just say 2040, right? So, uh, but that's, Okay, that's you, Burby, but then I was born ahead of you. Some people say, I was born here. Or some say, I was born here, and I will end somewhere here. But regardless, whatever is the point, we still have this time clock. And the main question people ask is, as we live this life is, who am I? We try to answer that question. Now, when we look at history, mankind has come up with three answers top main answers to the question of who am I? And the first answer that people say is I am what I do. Is that it? I am what I do. I am good with accounting. I am a farmer. I am a doctor. So our doctor is there. I, this is what I do. That's how I am defined. I am whoever we are. That's how people. And so, so therefore, they, they look at their own selves and they, they answer that question based on I am what I do. So when they are able to do things, they feel good about it. They somehow feel like there's some meaning in their lives because I am able to do. I am a good Carpenter, I am a good, I am what I do. That's how others say it. Others say, another answer to that is, and this is a big one, and something that I, you know, also got to get affected. I am what people say. 
I am what people say about me. Don't you feel good when people say something good about you? Wow. What, what, what a good husband. Oh, yeah. You know. What a good dad. I am, and so people, because of that's their identity, they feel high and feel excited. Maybe that's the word. When they are able to attain those good things about what people say about them. So people live their lives on what they can do or what people say about them. And then when they don't do as they want to do, they go down in that scale. Or when they hear things about what people say and like, you know, you know, for us who preach or speak, they say, Wow, oh, that's a good sermon. Oh, I feel good. Then there's one person who says, That was nonsense. So I said, so Do you feel down? Now, another, the third big one is for people is, I am what I have. I am what I have. That's humanity. I have a degree. I have these skills. I have wonderful children. I have, you fill in the blank. So we live our lives based on these three big ones, one, two, and three, so that when, for example, you do what you like to do, right, you're able to accomplish, you have a project, and you have this mission of maybe a transaction and a business, and you do it, you know what happened? Whoop, you go up there. And here, you feel what? Excited. Then you're there. You're able to do. But when you become like us, some of us who get older, we can't anymore do what we used to do, <laughs> can't anymore shoot that basketball, can't anymore run, you know, as fast as I, all my kids run past me, you know, not able to do those things. And then how do you feel? We go down, right? We go down. When we can't do anymore, I'm older. But of course we have, we can reason, but see my trophies? <laughs> see my certificates? See, see, you know, those are the things that I've done. But then we have this. And the same way when I am what people say, oh, we are so happy because we hear a lot of good things about us. So we live our lives through the year, through history. That's what mankind has been doing, trying to hold on to this because, you know, life has become like a zigzag. And so humanity has tried to always be here high on the top of the mountain and try to avoid this. You know, I have, you know what, and I, but then when you don't have, you feel down, you feel discouraged. And that's how humanity defines itself. That's how they define their life. And so the danger there is that because we want to hold on to this, and when we are down, it leads to sin and violence because people will do everything else so that they can just get what they have, so that they can get a good reputation, so that they can do more. Some people take maybe drugs so that they can run faster. I mean, every things that they can think of just to be able to get into the high. But when they don't get that, they get into this low and they feel discouraged, they feel down. So even when we get older, we say, oh, I did a lot of good things in the past. Look, look what I've done. I have good children. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but you know, we define ourselves on what we have what we do, or what people say. And when we don't get that, we feel very sad. I mean, do you agree, man? Don't you feel discouraged when you cannot do what you want to do? I mean, I, I feel down and when I hear somebody. And, and that's, that's how it is. That's life. So, we spend, therefore, we spend our energy. We spend a lot of our time trying to survive. That's it. We are trying to just be up there. 
because we're grasping after good words from people, trying to grasp this on the top, trying to survive. We hold on to a good name. We, we know that we, we want that on the top, and we don't want to live in the down. But then I know, as I live this life, I know it will end up here, dead. And when you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> Is that a good logic? <laughs> when you're dead, you can't do anything. I mean, can you? I mean, a person who is dead can't do anything. They have lost their identity. Or even sometimes when you get sick. When you're dead, you are forgotten. I mean, first time you die, very, people love you. They say good things in the funeral ceremony, memorial service. Oh, this is a good guy. And give it 10 years. Nobody talks about us anymore. 100 years? Do we talk about people who live 100 years? Only the heroes, maybe, but forgotten. Right? Do you own anything when you're dead? Can you bring your money to your coffin? And I, this is mine, you know? You can't, right? So it becomes irrelevant, all of that, once we reach that, that age. So I, what I want to say to all of us is that that is wrong. That kind of definition is not what God wants us to have. This is all wrong. This is not our identity. We have no choice because if you cling and say, I don't believe in this thing you're saying, Burmy, I still cling onto that. Then, okay, go ahead, cling, and you will live a miserable life, and the time you will die, you have no meaning, no purpose, and that's not what God wants in the first place. There's something else that, that God wants us to understand because this whole thing is wrong. Let's go to Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 4, you know the story? Jesus Christ, remember when he started his ministry? He was tempted by whom? The devil. And notice the kind of temptation he had. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Fasting for 40 days. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. You can do something. Imagine Jesus. If you turn the stone into bread, that is something you can do. I mean, isn't that great? You can do do something. Whoa, you can do. That's in the, I have what I do. That's something great. It's a miracle. You can do something. And then, of course, Jesus said, no, that's not what life is all about. Right? That's not what it is. Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's not about what I can do. Even Jesus said, he was being tempted about what you can do. You can do better. You can. Jesus says, no. Nope. That's not what life is about. It's not what you can do. Verse 5. And then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So he said, you can jump. From that high pinnacle, you can jump and imagine people will admire you. That's a, I mean, it's a flame, it's a bird, it's a, it's like <laughs> Superman. I mean, people admire people with great skills, don't they? If you can jump from the top, I mean, we all admire Olympic players. They can run fast, they can swim. It's those things and we admire them. And, and when you get into that mode, that kind of life, when you live your life based on wanting to get admiration, and that's basically what our life is about, trying to get admiration. And Jesus says, no, it is written, do not put your Lord to test. I mean, that's not what life is all about either. 
It's not that important to Jesus to jump and to be able to, to do that. It's not to become impressive, you know, to impress people. That's not what Christian life is about. It's not. Verse 8, And again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, and I will, if you will bow down and, and worship me. He said, you know Jesus? You can have everything you want. Number three. You can have everything you want if you just worship me. You can have. But again, Jesus answered and said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord God and serve him only. And the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. So here we see that he is totally all wrong. It's not our identity. And uh, what is our identity? Our identity that God gave us is what he said to Jesus. When Jesus Christ began his ministry and he was baptized and God said, This is my son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That is your identity. That is my identity. We are beloved. We are beloved sons and daughters of God. Claim that. I know it's a simple statement. Simple to say. Claim that. Because once you claim it, you believe it, you live it. So claim that. The greatest lie that Satan has given us humanity is to put our identity on these three things. And that's what mankind has done ever. But God sent His Son Jesus to show us that that is not humanity's identity. Our identity lies in what God the Father said to His Son. And that is, you are my beloved. You are loved. You are my beloved son and daughter. So say that to yourself, I am beloved. I am beloved. Because that's who you are. You are loved. In fact, the Bible says that you are beloved even before you were born. The God who made this line here for me loved me even before I was born. The God who is the God of first love. The Bible says God is love. The God of first love. Even from that, God loved us so much. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. Let me go to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah is after Isaiah. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. It says, The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Is that clear enough? It says, God loved us with what kind of love? Everlasting, Everlasting love. Be even before 1957, God has loved me. Before you were born, God has loved us. That's why Jesus died even you know, for us. Even before that, it says, before time began, the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. So God has loved us. Isaiah 49, verse 16. Let's go to Isaiah 49, verse 16. Isaiah 49, verse 16. It says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. God says, My love for you is everlasting. In fact, I have written your name on my hand in the palm of God. I have loved you with everlasting love. I have written your name in the palm of my hands. In Psalms 139, it says, I have knitted you, you know, together. I have put you together. God designed us, put us together in the mother's womb. I have loved you. I have embraced you. This is all God's message for us. And you, you and I have to hear that. You have to, we have to hear that, as Brian was saying, 
to, to go through this life and and life is challenging life is difficult life is a zigzag you know up and down up and down but we, we base our life on this we will be so confused and discouraged and depressed because that kind of life is not for us and God says here is you are beloved we have to hear that from the voice of the everlasting love who is God that's his voice so you know if you close your eyes in faith you hear that everlasting voice speaking even now to you it has not stopped that voice of God keeps saying to you I love you you are my beloved so even when you're down here in the dumps when we don't do as well as we want to do even when people say bad things against us or even when we don't have much to know that we are loved by the greatest of all who is God is amazing and that is what is going to carry us through life you know through those years that is what is going to give us joy and purpose as we move on to the next year that's what it's gonna do and then uh, we start discovering that you know we live this life not from this perspective but from something else so this is the kind of life people you know try to live but God says that is all wrong that should not be the way that should not be our identity but he said our identity is what I am a beloved son or daughter of God that is our identity and when we claim this we believe this and we embrace that that thing grows it grows and we may still have this up and downs but it's not what defines us it is not that's why it says I mean the Bible says in James 1 verse 2 to 4 it says count it all joy when you fall into all this trials man how is that possible how can we count it all joy when we are down in the dumps it can only be done when we embrace that statement when we are down and discouraged we say this I am a beloved child of God that's God saying it there is no other choice if we choose this one life will be miserable we cannot move on Matthew 5 10 says blessed are the persecuted how can they be blessed when they're down here because of this see life is not just about some people look at life all about transaction okay I give you something I get something you give something I get something that's kind of the life they have it's more like a business transaction but that is not the kind of life God wants us to have it's all about love it's all about God's giving here it's not transactional so even if we go up and down here you know we say I am the beloved child of God and the birth of Jesus Christ on earth clearly has shown us that love because when Christ became flesh and he died that is an expression of God's love for us all and that's why Paul and Silas remember they were thrown in the dungeon in jail but they were able to sing how could that be how can people who are thrown in jail and then chain their feet how can they sing well it's because they were depending it it's not about this because if they're thinking about what they can do what people say you can get really depressed but but here even though you go down in that level and you feel at a loss you know maybe you feel lonely and discouraged you know you know very well that you are the beloved you you and I so I, I, I use those two words you know claim that simple message for us claim it 
It's yours because that's from God. Claim it, meaning you believe it, and you live it. And when we listen to the voice of God in our hearts that we are beloved, and when we remain, you know, steadfast in our identity, we will stand strong in any circumstance. Whether people praise me, whether people reject me, whether I am rich, whether I am poor, we stand strong. And John 13, 34, if we go to John 13, 34, the voice, John 13, 34, Otto probably is faster in going through his computer than going through his pages. 1334, it says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another, and by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So okay, now we claim it, we live it, but then God is saying, understand that there's people out there too. That as I have loved you, how did God love us? Did, does God love us for what we are able to do? No. Because God loves us unconditionally. Does God love us for what we say? No. Does God love us for what we have? If you have a million dollars, does God love you more than one who is poor? No. God's love is not dependent on this. So God is saying now that I love you and I hope you would love others in the same way I love you. Right? Now look at our husbands and our wives and our children. Do we love them as God loves us? Do we love our children because they are beloved children of God? That is their identity. Or do we love our wives or husbands because of what they can do? What they have? Oh, I love my husband. He has a million dollars. You know, <laughs> you know it's not. It's, if God loves us, in spite of all those, God loves us unconditionally. God is saying here, I hope you people will love others the same way I love you. You love your wife because she's a beloved daughter of God. And she is your wife. You know? Not because of what she can do. Not because of what she say or what she has. You love your children. You love your parents in the same way. And that's the instruction here in John 13, 34. Now I know that as humans we try to love, but we fall short of how God loves but doesn't matter, even if we fall short, we say, I am loved, a beloved daughter of God. So I try to practice this, you know, on my own. When I go through this going down here, you know, this life, and maybe sometimes it can be confusing and discouraging, I just, I say, I'm a beloved son of God. I am loved by God. I say, you know, thank you, thank you so much, God. What God said of Jesus as, you are my beloved son, is also said of you, all of us here. Do not ever believe the lie of the enemy, Satan, who says something different. And God wants us to do that. So this is our identity. Let's say that together. We are beloved sons and daughters of God. Claim it. Live it. And God is saying here too, proclaim it. Proclaim the love of God by our words and also by the way we live our lives. Because a lot of people, a lot of people out there, your friends, my friends, they don't know this. They live their lives this way. So it is miserable. But God is saying, no, proclaim that love. Can we? 2015 is coming and our theme for the year of 2015 is proclaiming the love of God. That's our theme. Let's claim it, let's live it, and proclaim it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, we come to you. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love. 
everlasting love for all of us, Lord. Whoever we are, whatever condition we are in, circumstance, it doesn't matter because, God, your love is unconditional. Your love is never dependent on what we do, what we say, or what we have. You love us even from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you. Help us to claim that, Lord, to believe that, to live it, and also to proclaim that, Lord, that you are a loving God, not only by our words, but also by how we live our lives so that we may be compassionate, we may serve others, all because of your love. Thank you, Lord, and all this we ask and pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.